At the turn of the last century, Seattle was a city on the rise. On the heels of the gold rush, it had a population with money to spend. But when middlemen food vendors began to jack local prices beyond belief, the public finally put its foot down around Pike and Western with the idea of a farmer's market. The farmer sold out in uh, half a day. City Councilman Thomas Ravel issued the ordinance to establish Pike Place Market in 1907. This market is yours, he proclaimed. And soon, this city will have one of the greatest markets in the world. Wonderful phrases that, uh, that look a far way forward to what the market would become. Uh, that was always be a people's market. and That kind of language that was purple and appropriate to the time. Entrepreneur Frank Goodwin knew a good thing when he saw it. He turned the chaos of produce and money changing hands into an organized system of stalls. He said, this is a hell of a good location. And he immediately realized that this was going to be a continuing commercial center. So he built the main arcade there and he built a couple other buildings in that. And it became the de facto mayor of the market uh, right from the start, 1907 or so. Much of the market's main buildings were built during Goodwin's tenure leading up to World War I. Frank's nephew, Arthur Goodwin, had a flair for theatrics. In the 1920s, he added the feel of vaudeville and the cabaret. Had a lot of ideas that are seen here in the market. The uh, theatrical lights along the main arcade looked like the lights that were at the foot of um, the stages in the vaudeville theaters. A lot of the ornate columns were put there, constructed there to make it look like a European bazaar. He just thought it added to the ambience, added to the excitement, added to the energy of the market, and he was right about that. When the Goodwin family's fortune wore thin, an Italian farmer was waiting in the wings, Joe Desimone. But he was a shrewd farmer and frugal guy, and as soon as he got any money together, he stopped renting and started buying land and planting his own stuff. He also found the market was a very fine place to sell that produce, and uh, he was a good farmer, and he, he sold it. He kept adding to his uh, property, so that by the early 30s, he was a major stockholder in the public market. Joe looked like any other simple farmer, but he made a truckload of money. During the Depression, Seattle's main gathering place became a refuge for those living on the edge, a place for food, nearby shelter, and a warm smile. But it was World War II that forever changed the face of the market, the internment of the Japanese. There were almost 600 farm permits issued in 1939, uh, for instance, and, and clearly about two-thirds of those were individual or, or family Japanese Americans. In 1942, uh, there were only 96 farm permits issued, none of them to Japanese Americans. So you saw that kind of a loss there. But there were a lot of small businesses that were Japanese American owned in the market. They also, they, they left the farms and they began running produce stands and that. And uh, those were lost or held in trust for them until they got back. Many did not come back. They survived the war, they survived the internment, but they decided they didn't want to come back to the West Coast. By the 1950s and 60s, Pike Place Market was showing its age. The landlords that owned it were now getting old and they weren't putting their money back into maintaining the buildings. It began looking scruffy and dumpy to the point where Mayor Dorm Brayman in the mid 60s said, it's just a, um, a fire trap. The automobile and big highways led people out of the downtown and into the suburbs where the concept of supermarkets emerged. Everything grew. Retail merchandising grew and changed. That whole area uh, of uh, individual face-to-face -face merchandising died and supermarket merchandising began. Pike Place spiraled downward, a tired remnant of yesteryear that the city wanted to replace with new development. But a group of concerned citizens led by architect Victor Steinbrook mounted a campaign to save the market. Victor never, although he was a professor of architecture and loved buildings and that, he, he quite clearly, honestly said, these are not magnificent structures. <laughs> these were built on the back of an envelope by, a, by contractors. And uh, he always said, Victor always said, that the market is the people. And, uh, and it continues to be that, uh, that, that way. 
With a public vote to save the market and its declaration as a national historic site, as long as there is a Seattle, there will be a Pike Place Market. The future of the market's uh, in good hands. It's in its own hands.